What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Scott Gearman, Daniel Stark, and here to talk. The Dodgers' first wave of decisions have been made, and there's starting to be some rumors about which guys might be coming back and which guys might not. So, guys, the, the headline here is that the Dodgers decide not to make any qualifying offers to their available free agents. J.D. Martinez was kind of the guy that there was – potential for them to make a qualifying offer they opt not to make that decision but there's also been some rumors about jason hayward and jd martinez and potential return so let's talk first about qualifying offers daniel i'll come to you any surprise whatsoever that the dodgers choose not to make any qualifying offers this year uh z- zero surprise here for me the two options were clayton kershaw which they they've been you know just for because of you know the respect they have for him they've been hesitant yeah. to do that in the past and and with the surgery and everything it wasn't going to happen this year um and, and then with jd martinez you can't lock up your dh spot right now when you're chasing shohei otani like you can't have two dhs in your lineup so if you go ahead and offer that qualifying offer to jd there's always a chance he accepts it. Like, I don't know what his market is going to be. I don't know if he's going to get more than, you know, 20 million for one year or whatever. He might, he might get like two years, you know, at 15 million a year or something, but I don't know if he's getting, you know, 20 million a year. So um, if he accepts that, then, then, you know, then what do you do? Like Shohei Otani is only going to be a DH this year. Um, So you're not, you're not going to play JD in left field for 130 games or whatever. So logistically, it just didn't make sense. I still think they're open to a a reunion there. Like, like it says, but I, I, as far as the qualifying offer goes, that that was a no brainer for me. Scott, Andrew Friedman at the GM meetings um, said uh, that a reunion with JD Martinez is possible according to Jack Harris, the LA times, but that right now they still don't know quote, which direction we are going to go with our position player group. Uh, every GM has been afraid to say the name Otani out loud at these <laughs> meetings, but I'm with Daniel. No surprise that they can't lock up JD Martinez and they can talk about, Hey, it's possible for a reunion, but most of these teams that are going to be spending on a DH are not going to make a decision on JD Martinez until Otani makes a decision. Right? Yeah. It's kind of the first piece that needs to fall and then everything, uh, which sucks because, you know, yeah. free agency is so much fun uh, and then everything will come after that. Uh, but yeah. for the Dodgers, there's just, you're just like they've done. They don't want to lock in that DH unless uh, it's JD or someone, you know, Shohei Otani, someone who's, yeah. you know, solidified in that spot. So it's good. It's a lot of general manager speak, yeah. uh, a lot of front office talk from Amanda Freeman, Brandon Gomes. I know yesterday they're firing that off pretty hot, uh, yeah. not giving it a lot there, but it's a uh, elephant in the room. Let's see what yeah. Shohei Otani, where he goes. I heard he's going to allow the process to play out, which is uh, kind of fine. Whatever that means, you know, whatever that means, let's just wait and see what the Dodgers throw at him. And it, it's uh, as far as Clayton Kershaw, um, you know, that whole deal with tossing him the qualifying offer. It's just something that I don't necessarily think that they really, you know, wanted to do. Uh, yeah. I know seven players got the qualifying offer and I don't expect any of them to take it. Uh, yeah. Maybe with the exception of maybe one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of weeks, you know, at least Andrew Friedman isn't having the week that Brian Cashman has been having uh, as far as his, <laughs> uh, his availability this yeah. week, but let's move on and talk about Jason Hayward. Um, you mentioned the qualifying offer number was about $20 million. They weren't going to offer it to Jason Hayward. They couldn't have anyways. He already received the qualifying offer back in 2015. But there have been reports that there is mutual interest between the Dodgers and Jason Hayward on a return. The good news for Hayward, Scott, is that there's no sort of domino that needs to fall. Like this is a guy that could easily come back and really doesn't have, isn't impacted, in my opinion, by an Otani decision, a Yamamoto decision, anything else really. Because I don't think it's going to be a huge, huge number and at the end of the day, the Dodgers have a need in the outfield, no matter what Otani decides to do. So give me your reaction to the idea that Jason Hayward and the Dodgers have mutual interest on a return. I love it. He was fantastic for the clubhouse in so many ways. Uh, he yeah. took care of rookies. Uh, I know his relationship with uh, Freddie Freeman from way back. Uh, that was awesome. So yeah. the resurgence from Jason Hayward, you know, he you know really gelled with Mookie Betts. Uh, Hayward's number. As far as like a contract, I'm just you can kick it to Daniel while I find you know mm-hmm. what spot track has him you know projected as. But if they're able to bring him back as far as a platoon bat, it, it's going to be a number that they'll the you know Andrew Friedman, Brandon Gomes, they'll have to like just because what the production that they got from it, you know Jason Hayward on a minor league contract was incredible value, and I think that's something they can do again. And I know there's mutual interest there, uh, but I'm sure if there's an 
Uh, if contract doesn't matter to Jason Hayward, yeah. he'll sign back with the Dodgers. But I think if the number gets goes too north, it's something they just might not do. Uh, yeah. So MLB trade rumors has it at two years, $16 million. Is that a thumbs up for you, Scott? I'm going to say no. Okay. I'm going to say no. Daniel, that to me, that's I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Two years, $16 million on Hayward. It's a clubhouse guy. He was good defensively. He provided you a platoon guy offensively. Um, you know how he fits. I, you know, it, it's possible they get a little bit of a discount there because, you know, he's a veteran guy who's made tons of money. But for me, Daniel, I have no issues at two years and 16 million for Hayward. If, and again, this is just an MLB trade rumors projection, but they're pretty good at this type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, ideally you could get like the second year as a club option, maybe yeah. just yeah. just because yeah. you, you want to see what he's going to do this year. But yeah, I, I think we're all on the same page here. Like Jay Hayes, a, a, a great guy to have in the clubhouse. He's a solid platoon bat. The, the defense was really impressive last year, honestly, for a guy his age. Um, so if that's like one of your platoon guys in the outfield, like you said, they're going to, they got spots to fill in the outfield. Like I'm not, ex I, I wouldn't expect David Peralta back and left. So you need a lefty out there. We'll see what they do at second base and how much Mookie's playing right compared to second or whatnot. But I think we, we can all agree that th what made you know Mookie able to move to second base last year was how great Jason Hayward was in yeah, right yeah. field. Like if they didn't have Jay Hay in right field, they probably don't make yeah. that move. So I, I definitely think um, you know they should they should look to bring him back. I'm 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 with Scott. Like there's a certain number where if he gets like a big offer elsewhere, you you know you say thank you for yeah. your services and, and let him go. But I. I think, you know, the eight, seven, eight million a year, I think that's, you know, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, he was a 2.2 war player last year. Um, OPS over 800, 121 weighted runs created plus. We know the defense was a plus as well. Um, David Peralta also gone. I don't think any of us are expecting him to be back necessarily. And so there are openings in the outfield. There aren't prospects. I mean, Andy Pajes is on the 40-man roster, but he's not expected to be a major contributor this year. And then it's like, you know, the Michael Bush, Gavin Lux sort of outfield experiment, I suppose, is another <laughs> option out there. Um, Kike Hernandez, Chris Taylor. I mean, they have guys around, but I think Hayward, as a 2.2 wins above replacement player, that doesn't even factor in the sort of off the field impact. And it's worth pointing out, like as long as Jason Hayward has been in our life since 2010, he did just turn 34 years old. So he's not 38, 39. You know, if you're signing him for his age 34 and age 35 seasons, I think you can you can live with that. You know, obviously I'm with Daniel. Like maybe you make a, a, it's nine years in the first first year and the seven million dollar team option in year two or something like that. Like I, I just think there's a way you can structure it where this makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, so Scott, give me give me your final thoughts. So you said you're out on two years, 16 million, but it sounds like you'd be in if it was a team option. That's a lot. I I don't know. I don't know if I'm willing I mean, to go. Peralta got seven million bucks on the first. You know, his his deal ended up being eight million dollars last year. So I think that's just the going rate for these guys. Yeah, the, but the club option year would come with a buyout. I'm sure. Uh, it's just that's a lot. If you're paying one year, it essentially if you're just signing for the one and you're going to auto decline the the second year, if barring him performing again, it's like a one year ten million something like that. It's just kind of steep. I, I'm I'm not I'm not doing that. If it's over. I would say if it's over six million, I'm I'm not doing it. I so, know it sucks so to hear. What would but... be your backup option? Do you have you looked at? I mean, I'm, they've got Hayward as like the 42nd best free agent in their little rankings. The, the Bellinger number, by the way, 12 years, 264 million is the, whoever something. gives him that deal. That is going to be insane. <laughs> That's but, I mean, I'm just I'm just kind of looking through it, like who the other outfielders are, because the Dodgers need some help in the outfield, um, and kind of what what the options are. Um, you know, if, down there, if they I do, mean, if they do one year, if they do the one year with a club, fine. Like it won't bug me. But it's just for what they've done and how they've been able to find reclamation projects from the left hand side. They've been able to do it. I think they'll be able to find that production somewhere. There's guys out there who can that could give you more offensively for a slight bump in pay. So I would take that over, you know, Jason Hayward, uh, say one year, like nine or 10 million. I would for sure just pay a little bit more to get some more offensive production. Like Kiermaier, Kiermaier projected two years, $26 million. Well, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I also, I also think some of it will depend on like how much the Dodgers are willing to spend this off season. Like if we're in a world where we're trying to stay below the luxury tax and we're operating oh. on a budget, I think if that's the case, then, then yeah, we don't want to pay, you know, we'll 8 million up. to Jay. Hey, but if, if we're, 
spending all the money and, and you know, luxury tax is no concern, then I don't think any of us care if Jay Hayes getting eight million just because yeah, yeah, it's not know. it's not affecting them from getting anyone else, you know. Yeah. It's not our yeah. money, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> JD Martinez, by the way, two years forty million dollars is the MLB trade rumor projection there. So he's an angel. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So let us know what you all think in the comments below. Again, mutual interest with Jason Hayward, potential for a J.D. Martinez uh, reunion, depending on what the Dodgers decide to do with their position player side of things. I think Scott brings up a good point. Something we'll be discussing a lot is what they decide to do financially and spending wise, I think will go a long way in this conversation. That is Daniel. That is Scott. Again, thanks for joining us. If you're new, check out our podcast, Dodger Heads on Apple, Spotify and Google. We go live every Sunday night. Uh, we'd love to have you join that. Join us for that or listen after the fact via podcast. Enjoy the rest of your day, folks. And as always, go Dodgers.